Araba Santo Robo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, manama sekebe. Yes, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You, Lord, are worthy. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, TikTok, what's going on? What is happening? What is happening? Hallelujah. Let me set this up right here. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Y'all come on in. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you, YouTube. My YouTube family, my Facebook family. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, those on TikTok, I want you to share this with somebody. YouTube and Facebook, I want you to share this with somebody. <laughs> your holy name tonight hallelujah all right there we go oh we're good we're good we're good how's everybody doing tonight how's everybody doing tonight y'all talk to me now what's going on with y'all apostle god bless you God bless you, sir. What's going on, y'all? Guys, do me a favor. I want you to share this with your friends. I want you to share this with somebody. Those on TikTok, uh, those on Facebook and YouTube, I want you to share this with somebody, all right? Uh, those on, God bless you, woman of God. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Uh, those on TikTok, I want you to... Um, Smash the screen just a little bit. Help me get the hearts up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. Amen. Before I even begin, I want to just say a word of prayer and just invite the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Amen, because we can't do nothing without God. We can't do a thing without God. We need God in every way. Amen, somebody? Y'all quiet tonight. Y'all quiet. Y'all must be tired. Amen. Let me just pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad, Father. You have kept us, O oh God, from from harm, from danger, Father God. You kept us safe, Lord God. The enemy desired to uh, trample over us, God, but Lord, you kept us, God. You, you kept a hedge of protection around us and our family. So for that, God, we say thank you. Father, we yield to you completely. We say yes to you completely, Father God. Lord, tonight, I pray that you would, oh, have your way, Lord, tonight. Father, I decrease that you may increase. Father, I pray that you will be glorified, that all that you desire to say, all that you want to convey to your people, Father God, let it come forth in Jesus' name. Even now, I pray against hindrances, God. I pray against distractions, God. I, I pray against the weapons of the enemy. And I declare no weapon formed against me will prosper in any way in Jesus' name. I pray, Father God, that the broadcast tonight 
will be covered in Jesus name let there be order even now in Jesus name I pray concerning the airways let the airways be clear in Jesus name angels of the Lord contend for the airways there would not be any distraction any hindrances any interference in any way in the mighty name of Jesus father let your will be done tonight in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name come on let's say amen amen and amen hallelujah glory to your name glory to your name roboko sekebe katala basataya rabande beke sakolo boseke rababa kalabasia namasaya glory to your name jesus hallelujah and we thank you lord god we thank you we thank you we thank you there is no one like you, O God. Rabba ba ke me ke taraba satorobo se be ke si karaba sataya. Lord, we thank you tonight. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'm not going to be before you long. I just want to do a, a, a quick teaching on Leviathan and the Marine Kingdom. Um, I was I was asleep and the Lord gave me gave me some nuggets while, while I was asleep. And um, here I am. <laughs> Amen. So um, I want you to take some notes. Amen. Take some notes. Amen. And um, I believe this is going to help you um, in your journey, especially as a believer. You know, um, Paul said, you know, be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. You know, we 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 tend to uh, just go on with Christianity. We do church. We do church. But we don't learn about our enemy. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of pastors are not teaching about the adversary. And this is, um, and this is one of the ways that the enemy thrive against believers, because believers uh, they don't know how to defend themselves against the enemy. <clears throat> um, it's sad, but we know basic prayers. Satan, I rebuke you. Satan, I rebuke you. And we think that that's gonna work all the time, but it won't. You know how many know that the enemy, they uh, they are intelligent beings. And we got to call them out by name. We have to address them accordingly. We have to have the right verbiage. Right? Because when you go into a battle, you want to make sure that you have the right armory, the right, the, 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 the right weapons on hand for you to go into battle and fight against the enemy. <coughs> and sad to say... Um, this has been um, something that the body of Christ has been lacking. We have entered the battle. We say yes to the Lord. We've entered the battle, but we don't have the proper weaponry to fight against the enemy. Or we don't have the knowledge to fight against the enemy. And it is God's desire that his people would not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Are you guys with me so far? Are you guys with me so far? Amen. So, um, my hopes that my hopes is this, this small teaching will give you, um, some nuggets to take along with you to help you. Amen. In battle against the enemy. Give me one second, guys. Yes, it is. One second. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. Flip this up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I want you guys just to stay with me here. 
Amen. 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 All right. So, um, so we're so tonight we're talking about the Marine Kingdom. We're talking about Leviathan, right? Um, we can actually see in in the Book of Psalms, Psalms ninety one specifically. It points to Leviathan. Psalms 91 verse 13 says, uh, this is out of the King James Version. It says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. So here, so here, the dragon, the dragon is Leviathan. Leviathan is the dragon. Once again, it says... <clears throat> thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Right. So when we begin to break that word down, dragon, um, you will see that this actually talks about Leviathan. And, and it, it actually points to the marine kingdom as well. So this so this scripture and many others shows evidence of the marine kingdom sometimes things are right under our noses and we have to do some digging all right for my scholars out there if you want to do your own study you could find um this translation in the strong concordance on uh, the strong concordance uh h8565 all right, so the word dragon translated, it means adder. It means uh, snake, venomous, serpents, perhaps the cobra, adder, or viper. Okay? Excuse me. The adder, the adder, the adder represents the snake, the venomous serpent, perhaps the cobra, the adder, or the viper. Now, dragon, that dragon, translate, it means a marine or land monster. A marine or land monster. An example, sea serpents or jackal. Dragon, sea monster. Serpent or whale. So the word dragon translated means all these things. Once again, a marine or land monster. An example, sea serpent or jackal, dragon, sea monster, serpent, well. Okay. Psalms 74 and 13. Psalms uh, 74, 13 and 14. It says, thou didst divide the sea by the strength Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. So even right here in Psalms, it also points to Leviathan. It points to the dragon. It shows us the, the, the activity or life of the marine kingdom. All right. It says, Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. So once again, even in scripture, it shows us, it shows us of the activity of the marine kingdom. It shows us Leviathan in scripture. And of course, there, there there are many other verses, um, scriptures that 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 actually mentions Leviathan, that actually mentions uh, the the uh, marine kingdom. All right, so, um, Isaiah twenty seven and one says, "In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan." The piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So we see a lot of these movies with 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 these uh, 
these uh, creatures, these reptiles, these these serpents, right? These these um, directors, they know exactly what they're doing. They're 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 pointing to what actually exists. There's a world, a different world, underwater, and that is the marine kingdom. And the scriptures point to it. It's evident. It's right there, right in our faces. But now the enemy doesn't want us to know this information. The enemy wants us to be ignorant of his devices. Isaiah 27 and 1, once again, it says, In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish leviathan the piercing serpent even leviathan that crooked serpent and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea so let's just talk about leviathan just for a little bit <clears throat> right so leviathan he is actually a principality he's a principality and we can understand uh the the, the enemy's ranks through scripture we can understand the the kingdom of darkness ranks in scripture we can find this in ephesians chapter 6 6 and 12 it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places now this is me right here right this is me i truly believe that leviathan is over the marine kingdom i think he's ruler over the marine kingdom of course satan is supreme over over the kingdom of darkness but i think over the marine kingdom i i believe that leviathan is is over the marine kingdom so leviathan is a prince of palady <clears throat> so now we understand that uh in whatever kingdom you know we have god's kingdom then and then, then we have satan's kingdom there's, there's, there's always structure There's always order I believe that Now being that Leviathan is over the marine kingdom There are uh, subordinates under him There are workers under him Are you guys with me so far? Y'all quiet? Man But there are workers under him now, the enemy doesn't want you to know this information because in your time of prayer, he would love to hinder you. You'd be praying to the left, but the enemy is, is to your right. But when you learn the right verbiage, you are able to dismantle the works of the enemy over your life. Amen. God bless you guys. TikTok is with me. Where y'all at? Facebook and uh, YouTube. Y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. Come on now. You know, so when you learn the right verbiage, you could attack the enemy's kingdom properly. So when we pray, we go for the foot soldiers. But when when we are in a place of authority, we should go for the high ranking spirits. Those that do deliverance understand this, right? When you do deliverance, you want to attack the higher ranking uh, uh, spirits that's in the person's body. And that'll make the deliverance session so much easier. You a foot soldier. I, I'm not about to deal with you. I want your boss. Oftentimes when I'm dealing with Jezebel or other high, higher ranking spirits, I will ask Jezebel, who's under you? Okay. I bind you to your subordinates with chains of fire. Get out now. Then I will kick the spirit out So when we understand the right verbiage When we understand the structure of the enemy's kingdom We can deal with them accordingly So one, one common sign 
of um, whether or not a, a person has the spirit of Leviathan. I'm going to get into this, right? Then I'm going to shift somewhere else, right? So one so one common sign uh, somebody is oppressed by the spirit of Leviathan is pride. It's pride. That's, that's 101. Oh, yeah. It's pride. That's one of the traits of Leviathan pride. That's that's what he's you know known known for. So prideful. What is prideful? Having an excessive high opinion of oneself. You ever met someone like that? Always talking about themselves, always bigging themselves up. Right? It's just me, 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 me. Look at me. Look, look, look what I have done. Look what I have done. Right? Always me, 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 me. Right? The person is always right and is never wrong. You ever met someone like that? They're always right. Always right. They they can't see their faults. They're just 100% right all the time. This is another indication that the person has the spirit of Leviathan working inside of them. Now, get this. When, when, when someone is, is bound by a spirit, normally it's not just one, one particular spirit. They roll in packs. They, they roll as a unit. They roll together. So if the person has the spirit of Leviathan, best believe there's other spirits up in there. So also when you have someone that that is unteachable, they know everything. You can't teach them nothing. You know what they say, right? You can't teach a uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I know people like that. I know people like that. They know everything. Right? So 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 these are uh another indication that the person is bound by the spirit of Leviathan. Now get this. When 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 the person normally has that spirit, they won't even notice it. Believe us, understand this. The enemy can cause us to feel a sense of peace. A demonic peace and it will appear as if is the actual peace of the Holy Spirit or the peace of God so what we're doing what we're saying it will uh, appear as if we're right we're correct but we're actually wrong I've I've heard spirits manifest right under under the authority of the Holy Spirit, they testified and said that they gave the person a sense of peace or they give people a sense of peace so they can believe the information that they utter out of their mouth or the revelation that they receive is actually true. It's actually from God. The enemy can give us a sense of peace. And I've and and I've had people come to me and they've they've gave me a word and they thought the word that they heard was from the Holy Spirit, but it really wasn't. But they felt a peace. So they thought it was from God. So this is why fasting, this is why prayer is important for the believer. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It may seem right to you. It may feel right to you, but it may not be right. You know what God told me? God told me, don't go off your feelings. Your flesh will lie to you. He said, don't go off of your feelings. Don't listen to your feelings. Sometimes I wake up, I don't feel saved. God always tells me, don't listen to your flesh. Don't go off your feelings. 
So we can't just, right? We hear something, just run off and believe it. Because the enemy can give us a false word as well. Right? Just real quick. We hear we hear three voices in our heads, in our minds, right? Whatever you want to call it. We hear three voices. We hear our voice, we hear God's voice, and the enemy's voice. And when we spend time with God, we're able to identify God's voice. But now let's sit, let's just say that you that you are looking for an answer. You you want to hear something. You want God to say something. You will be you will be more inclined to listen to the enemy's voice versus God's voice because you want that answer already. That answer is premeditated. For example, you want to go out and do something. You're like, God, can I, can I do this? Lord, can I go? You want God to say yes. So the, the minute you hear yes, you jump up and say, oh, that was God. I heard a yes, and I felt a peace. But now that is not God's will for you to go. So the whole time God is saying no, but you want to hear yes, so you believe that yes. It's been times I wanted to do things and I wanted a, I, I wanted to hear a yes. And I went with the yes, but God said no. Did I rebuke myself and say, no, I'm not double minded. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? We can hear what we want to hear. The enemy can gives, give us a false word. A false revelation. The enemy can give us um, partial revelation as well. <coughs> this is why it's important to stay in the face of God. This is why it's important to have a prayer life and die to self. Because what happens when your flesh wants that yes? You believe your flesh over the Holy Spirit any day. It happened to me many times. But back to some of the signs of a person uh, bound by the spirit of Leviathan. So the person is unteachable and thinks they know it all. You can't teach them nothing. Or uh, um, another sign of a person being oppressed by the spirit of Leviathan is God only speaks to me syndrome. God only speaks to me syndrome or the uh, self-righteous syndrome. This is another. Uh, these are other signs that points that the person is bound by the spirit of Leviathan. God only speaks to me. God only speaks to me. I've witnessed leaders, pastors, people with titles. Let me say that completely off, off, off. But they were deceived because they heard what they wanted to hear. See, the enemy, he studies us. The kingdom of darkness studies us. We have monitoring spirits. We have, we have uh, surveilling spirits. We have familiar spirits and they watch us. We have watchers. They watch us. So they know our body language. They know what, what sins we're fighting to stay away from. They, they know us. So when something jumps off and we want to hear that yes, don't you know the enemy will speak to us and tell us that yes? They can discern that we that we're, we're seeking God concerning something and they will give us a false word. You can't always listen to the first voice that you see. You can't do it. I remember when I met my wife and um she she uh she finally gave me her number after after I was in her inbox <laughs> for some time. Uh anyways, um now the Lord told me 
that this is your wife. After the, after the Lord told me numerous times, no, 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 no. When I would ask the Lord, Lord, is this my wife? Is this my wife? The, the, like the Lord would tell me no straight up. I got to a point where I got tired of asking. But when I met my wife, he told me, yes, this is your wife. Okay. Now, after I heard that this is your wife, I didn't settle on that word. I fasted for about a week or so. I fasted and I would ask the Lord numerous times, is this my wife? And while fasting, I heard no. While fasting, I heard no, that's not your wife. So that troubled me because I heard yes. But then while fasting, I heard no. So I said, okay, Lord, what's going on here? So I said, Lord, show me what's going on. And I prayed. The Lord opened my eyes in the spirit and I seen a demon um, next to my door. So the enemy told me no in hopes that I would listen to that no and not marry my wife. So again, we hear more than one voice, right? We hear our voice, God's voice and the enemy's voice. So we can't just run with the voice, uh, the, the, the first word or the first voice that we hear. We got to try the spirit to see if it's really of God. Now, what if I would have listened to that? No. We can't listen to the, the voice of the enemy. The enemy will speak to us and appear as a false holy spirit. Are you guys with me? <coughs> Hallelujah. Are you guys with me? TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. That's all right. I'm going to keep teaching. That's okay. Y'all want to talk to me. That's all right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, last example of uh, someone that needs someone that is bound by the spirit of Leviathan. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I've been pastoring for X amount of years. I, I already know. You can't teach me nothing. I've been pastoring for, for 20 years. This is another sign of someone that is bound by the spirit of Leviathan. Mr. Know-it-all. You know what all. There's no new revelation. God, God is not going to use anyone else and give them revelation. It can only come through you. I've been pastoring for 50 years. I've heard it. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. This is a sign that the, that, that the individual or people is oppressed by the spirit of Leviathan. God bless you, sir. God, God will give others revelation. He won't just give you revelation. If you think you're the only one that God will speak to, you are sadly mistaken. You are sadly mistaken. You are not the only prophet, sir. There's like 50 other prophets that have not bowed down to Baal in the cave, chilling, being sanctified. You are not the only one. What is this? So I also want to say there are other spirits, of course, in the marine kingdom besides Leviathan. There are many spirits associated with the marine kingdom. All right, Job 26 and 5, it says what? It says, dead things are formed from under the waters. What? Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So there, there are inhabitants. There are creatures under the water. 
Are you guys hearing me? There are creatures under the water in the marine kingdom. It says dead things. <clears throat> dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So Leviathan, of course, he's not the only uh, 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 spirit in the marine kingdom. There's so many other. There's there's mermaid spirits, merman spirits. I remember doing uh, doing uh, several sessions, and mermaid spirits manifested. And I asked, "What is your name?" And it said, "Mermaid or merman." How did you enter? From Starbucks What There's There are siren spirits And These spirits can enter Through various Ways Let me read this Since we're on the subject Mark 5 Verses 1 Through 13 <coughs> Glory to God I pray this is blessing somebody It says they came over Unto the other side of the sea Into the country of the Gadarenes And when he was come Out of the ship immediately There met him out of the tombs A man with the unclean spirit Verse 3 Who had this dwelling Among the tombs And no man could bind him no, not with chains Because that he had been often bound with the feathers and chains And the chains had been plucked asunder by him And the feathers broken in pieces Neither could any man tame him And always night and day He was in the mountains and in the tombs Cutting, crying, excuse me And cutting himself with stones and when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? Listen, y'all, here we go. And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. And there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave And the unclean spirits went out And entered into the swine And the herd ran violently Down the steep place into the sea They were about 2,000 And were choked in the sea Did y'all catch that? So there was a man in the tombs Cutting himself day in and day out Right? So when 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 that spirit seeing Jesus afar off, that spirit quickly gathered up and ran to Jesus. Then Jesus identified the spirit and said, "What is your name? What is your name?" Just real quick, those that do deliverance, don't let these inexperienced Christians discourage you. It's okay to interrogate demons. Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ did, and Jesus already knew this answer. But he did this to teach us believers of the authority that we have. He did this for us. He did it for us. He knew the demon's name already. But for the sake of the reader, for the sake of the body of Christ, he showed us how we can deal with these demons. But anyways, he asked this demon, what is your name? The demon said legion. But notice this. The demon asked. As, uh, 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 asked Jesus and said Hey listen please don't send me out of the country don't, don't send me out of this region Don't send me out 
but allowed me to go to the swine. And after, after Legion went into the swine and they ran into the sea. Why? Because Legion is also connected to the Marine Kingdom. Legion is also connected to the Marine Kingdom. So once again, there are many spirits that 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 inhabit the Marine Kingdom, that dwell from the, from the Marine Kingdom, that is from the Marine Kingdom. There are many spirits that are connected to the Marine Kingdom. So now, I may have to do a part two on this. So now, what are some ways to open up doors to the Marine Kingdom? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Right? And I want to make a point after I list some of these things, right? What are some of the ways to open up doors to the Marine Kingdom? Fornication, adultery, masturbation, watching pornography, doing drugs, piercings. Let me just stop there. So now the, these are some some of the ways that the Marine Kingdom will gain the Marine spirits can gain access to us even something simple as um traumatic rather someone being raped someone being molested this will open up a door to the marine kingdom and when they come in they don't come by themselves they come with their friends they come with their buddies Also, just real quick, even when when the disciples were in the boat and they seen Jesus, excuse me, when when the disciples was in the boat and they seen Jesus afar off and Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. Notice in that, notice in that text, in that story, the Bible says how the winds begin to become boisterous. The waves became boisterous. That's a that's a sign of the marine kingdom as well. That points to the marine kingdom as well. But these are some of the ways that these spirits can gain access to us. Somebody being molested. I know a lot of us don't want to talk about it. A lot of us bury it. We want to forget about it. But because of this thing that happened to you, you need deliverance. I thank God for counseling. Amen. But counseling is not going to cause a demon to leave your body. Medication is not going to cause a demon to leave your body. You need deliverance. Because these spirits will enter you and they will steal, kill, and destroy they would do whatever it takes to destroy you, to keep you from reaching your destiny. They would do whatever it takes to keep you back, to keep you restricted, to keep you hindered. You go to church, right? You can dance, you can pray, all that good stuff. You can even preach, you can prophesy. But as long as there's a leash around your neck, Pharaoh didn't mind the people of Israel Worshiping God He just didn't want them to leave That location What am I saying The enemy doesn't mind you worshiping He doesn't mind you going to church Just as long as you don't fulfill Your God given assignment As long as There, there, there is restrictions Over you As long as you're hindered that's what the enemy loves. That's what he wants. That's what he desires. 
And a lot of us have done these things. We fornicated. We we we've masturbated. We watched pornography. A spirit manifested while I was doing a deliverance session from watching pornography. And I asked the spirit, "Where are you from?" The spirit said, "From the Marine Kingdom." I asked, "How do you look? Like a reptile?" What? These spirits are from the Marine Kingdom. And this is why God desires for us to walk in purity. Because God is trying to protect us. Then when things happen in our lives, we blame God. But now we can't blame God when there's sin that is unresolved, that is not dealt with in the bloodline. What I've learned from doing deliverance is this. Whatever you don't deal with, it will deal with you and those in your bloodline. It will affect those in your bloodline. So this is why we see uh, such a high rate of murder, death, uh, 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 suicide. There's so much stuff that goes on because there is sin in the bloodline. Then here you have someone that don't truly know the heart of God. They will question God and say, God, how can you allow this to happen to me? Or they will say, where was your God when this happened? It's not God's fault, but it's those that came before us that sinned against God. And now you're paying for the mess. You're paying the consequences for that sin. It's not God. It's our ancestors. We need to repent. We blame God, but it's not God's fault. But it's those that came before us. The witchcraft. The witchcraft. The santeria. The voodoo. We blame God, but it's not God. And this is why we all need deliverance. There's so many people that's filled with pride. I know a lot of them, man. On my Facebook, in real life, they preach, they prophesy, but they won't touch deliverance, though. No. Because God is using them. They don't, they don't believe they need deliverance. Because the church was packed out. They don't believe they need deliverance. But you tell them to do a session with somebody that really knows about deliverance. You will see how much they manifest. I've done so many deliverance sessions with people that is so anointed. Spirits, matter of fact, Jezebel manifested and and and, and she said, I, I, I was good. I was good until he came to talk to you. Jezebel, how long you been there? I've been there since birth. So what does that say? Jezebel entered and also Jezebel is part of the Marine Kingdom. Jezebel entered the individual, not because of that person's sin, but because of the sin of someone in the bloodline. Do you see what I'm saying? So in your right mind, how can you say you don't need deliverance? That's pride. You, that's self-righteous. Oh, you're perfect, huh? You're a saint, huh? You're an angel, carnated, huh? You don't need deliverance. No, you don't. Nah, you are too holy. You are you are too holy. You don't need deliverance. We all need deliverance. I've done numerous sessions and the spirit manifested. And it was there as a result of someone's sin or someone's trauma, someone's fear, generational confusion. You don't know what's in your bloodline. These marine spirits, they just having a good old time. Because some pastors, they don't want to touch on deliverance. It's too messy for them. It comes with a whole lot. Y y yes, it does. Yes, it does. It comes with opposition. It comes with resistance. It comes with backlash. So a lot of pastors, they don't want to touch on this stuff. Python spirit as well, of course. Amen. That spirit's also from the marine kingdom. A lot of believers, they don't know about this stuff because a lot of pastors don't touch on it. Some out of ignorance. Some out of fear. Out of straight fear. 
they're comfortable with the amount of attacks that they get already. So, so, so they don't want no more. They're comfortable with with how things are going on the job. They're comfortable with how things are going at home. So they they don't want to add to their plate. How can we say we'll need deliverance? Even myself, I I do deliverance, but I take myself through deliverance. Just just uh last week, my wife took me through deliverance. Ain't no pride here. I I know I need deliverance. Because I understand according to scripture, the enemy will attempt to come back. And not only that, but spirits can be sent to us as well. So how can we say we don't need deliverance? You don't know what's inside of you. You angel. <laughs> We're just perfect. We're just perfect. We all need deliverance. We all need deliverance. Let me get back to my notes here. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. Um, let me read this scripture right here. Guys, I'm I'm almost out of here. I just want to go over a few things. I'm gonna have to do a part two. Uh 2 Corinthians 6 17. It says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, says if the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So this is God's way of protecting us. This is God's way of keeping us. This is God's way of preserving us, keeping us from the hands of the enemy. If, if you would just sit back and just think about this thing, Satan is so cunning. Those leaders that say uh, Satan don't got no power, they don't know what they're talking about. Satan does have power. The enemy does have power. Demons does have power. And when we, when we open up a door, they have a greater power over us. There's no power above Jesus Christ, of course. But when we, when we sin against God, we give the enemy legal right to operate. We allow the enemy to come in. I've I've heard demons say that they they gain legal access and they can operate freely when we sin. When we sin against God. The demon said that mankind loves to fornicate. So they have legal you know they have avenues different means to 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 attack us because we we are so per, per, perverted we're so perverted even even through the things that we watch spirits can enter us the things that we listen to i don't care what nobody say right i'm a firm believer in the word there's some things that we just can't do as believers we can't be a lover of the world and love God at the same time. We can't serve two masters. We can't serve two masters. We can only serve the living true God. So when we do these things, we open up doors for the enemy to enter in. Now, listen to this. If I sin today, I go out and smack somebody. Father, I repent for my anger. I, re I repent. Please forgive me. I will be forgiven of my sin. But now a door was open to the enemy to come in. As a result of my sin. Now I need deliverance. So oftentimes, right, we get saved and we forget about the things that we once did. We forget about the things that our ancestors have gotten themselves into. We've all been and we all fornicated, masturbated, and done other things. It's not just sexual sins, but we've all touched the unclean thing. But now here we go. A lot of us are ignorant of deliverance. And we wonder why we're hindered spiritually. 
and we wonder why things take place in our lives. We wonder why our children is being tormented at night, having nightmares. There are open doors. There, 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 there's sin in the bloodline that needs to be dealt with. But a lot of pastors, yeah, just come to church, come to church, come to church. But where's the demonstration of power? Jesus' ministry was deliverance and healing. I love a good word. I'm not against a good word. But if all you're doing is just preaching, 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 there's no signs and wonders, that's a problem. Do you really believe in the right Jesus? I heard somebody's testimony, right? Um, and my heart just broke. And I was talking to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, it's like the person, like the person's life was designed for her to fail. The person been been molested, rape, got into new age, got into so much stuff, opened her, opened her third eye. And I actually got um got got the privilege to doing uh for um I actually got a privilege of doing a deliverance session with the person. And so much stuff was revealed during this session. And I said to her, I said to her, I said, if I was with you, I would, I would give you a hug. Like, you are a survivor. You've been through it. A lot of us go through these things and we tell nobody. We hide it. We bury it. We're molested. We're raped. And we never tell nobody about it. Then now get this. Like I said before, these birds don't come alone. So if the spirit of molestation come, low self-esteem is going to come. Rejection is going to come. Abandonment is going to come. Fear is going to come. Doubt is going to come. You need deliverance. So my beef is with these pastors out here not doing deliverance. These prophets, these apostles, all these titles, but you don't do deliverance. You don't care to learn about deliverance. You can set God's people free. God's people need this stuff. But we're so concerned about prophesying. We're so concerned about the money, the tithes. We're so concerned about the wrong things. When God's people are going to church with their demons and they're leaving with their demons. That's my beef. That's why I can't do regular church. I can't do it no more. I've done it. I'm churched out. I'm churched out. I'm churched out, bro. No. No. It's people out here hurting, hurting. I've heard spirits manifest and say that I keep the person from flowing in their gifts, from operating in their gifts. They could prophesy, but there's a cap. There's a limitation. There's a blockage. That's my beef. And because their pastor doesn't even talk about deliverance, they think that, oh, this is who I am. The woman said to me, I thought this is uh, I thought this is the way that it was supposed to be always. She said, I've been hearing voices since I was young. And she said that she thought it was normal. She'd been hearing the enemy speak doubt into her uh, into her spirit for her whole life. And she says she thought it was normal. What? After I called that spirit out, confusion, she said, it's quiet in here. She said, it's quiet in here. I don't hear no more voices. You, you ask your pastor, why don't you do deliverance? Why don't you do deliverance? Why don't you, why don't we do deliverance? So this is why I'm so passionate about deliverance Because I too I know what it's like to be tormented at night By demons To go to sleep with your clothes on With my clothes on But wake up butt naked I know what it's like To have my bed flooded with <laughs> Liquid Because I was sexually harassed by demons 
I know what it's like to go to, to, to be afraid to go to sleep because I don't want what happened last night to happen again. I know what it's like to be held down at night. I know what it's like to go to a leader and say, listen, this is happening to me and be completely dismissed. It happened to me. It happened to me. Dismissed. Oh, yeah. It sounds like that's some perversion. Okay. What's next? That was it. It wasn't no follow up. It was no, no, no teaching. Oh, you should do this. You should do this, man of God. None of that. So I know what it's like to be oppressed by your demons and have no one there to help you. So this is why I do what I do. This is why I'm so passionate about, about deliverance. One time I was walking, right? This was before I came into uh, Christ. One time I was drunk and I was walking and I don't care what, I don't care what nobody say. I strongly believe I seen a demon in front of me. The demon said with a devilish voice, you need help. You need help. I'm like, bro, what? Heck no. I went the other way. I know what it's like to have demonic encounters. This thing is real. So I don't understand how, how leaders in the church is not even concerned about deliverance. That's a problem. That's a problem. They're just focused on prophesying. They're focused on altar calls, but no deliverance. They're focused on these conferences, but no deliverance. These holy convocations with no deliverance. Come on, bro. Come on. Yes, sir, man of God. I even took my kids through deliverance. Spirits manifested as well. But some, but some of the church is not even concerned about this stuff. That's a problem. That's a major problem. And you may ask, am I, am I authorized to do deliverance? Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. It's actually the sign, one of the signs of being a believer. He said, in my name, you will cast out devils. This is some of the signs of being a believer. Every believer can do deliverance. Every believer. All you have to do is learn the verbiage. Like I said in the beginning, you learn the right verbiage. And, and you can cast these spirits out of yourself. You can do deliverance on your children, on your spouse, on your wife, on your husband, on your son, on your daughter. What are you waiting for? This is the authority that Jesus wants us to walk in. This is what the Lord wants from us. My prayer is that something got your attention. My prayer is that something woke you up. My prayer is that some, something that I said resonated with you. Are, you. are you okay with just regular church? Just regular old church. Same old stuff. Pastor screaming. The saints running around, sweating, jumping to the queue, the cues, the dump, dump, uh, 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 clapping their hands, right, stomping their feet, same old stuff every week, the same people falling out every week, but no signs and wonders.
<clears throat> I'm going to do a part two. A part two is needed. A part two is definitely needed. Listen, I'm doing a mass deliverance on the 16th. The time is going to be um, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. You may say, I'm not sure if I need deliverance. If you heard the beginning of this 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 discussion is teaching you will see that yes you do every believer needs deliverance every believer so i want to personally invite you to our mass deliverance those on tiktok you can go right there to my profile um and you could click the link go to my website go to uh go to book a session and simply click mass deliverance and sign up it's free, y'all. It's free. Those on YouTube, you can go to my website, www.profitodolin.com. Go to book a session and click mass deliverance. Move quickly. The spots will fill up. I'm telling you. We are all we are already at a hundred and hundred and something people, I believe. Okay? The spots will fill up quickly. Those on Facebook, same old thing. Go to my website, go to book a session, and click mass deliverance. Everyone needs deliverance. I remember when I when I um went through my deliverance and I said to myself, I have to get to know the real me. Because I was so used to being bound for so long. <laughs> I said, now I, I gotta get to know the real me. So I encourage everyone to go. Through deliverance Oh man <clears throat> Oh excuse me I'm about to close this out y'all I'm going to say a word of prayer And we are out of here Stand by for part two Stand by for part two Father we thank you for your grace We thank you for your mercies Father I thank you for allowing me to To speak on your behalf I thank you Father God That you conveyed your word to your people I pray that it will fall on good ground, Father God, and the enemy will not come and snatch it. Let it be secured in your people, Father God. I pray that, Lord God, you will cause the seed to grow. I pray that you will give the increase in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people, God. Father, you know the needs concerning your people. Meet the needs of your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. May you be glorified, oh God, in their lives. I pray that whatever need they may have, God, that you would meet those needs in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, you would and uh, overtake them, Father God. Lord, saturate them with your presence, oh God. May they feel your comfort, God. May they feel your peace, God. Some haven't felt peace in such a long time. May they feel joy once again. May they feel comfort once again, Father. May they yield their hearts to you completely. May they answer the call this time, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. May they surrender it all to you, Father God. May you help them to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, bring forth revelation. Bring forth understanding, Father. Confirm your word. For your namesake Father be with your people I pray Psalms 91 over your people That they will be guarded and protected In the name of Jesus I pray concerning their atmosphere Let their atmosphere be secured by you I pray a wall of fire Around their homes God In the name of Jesus Let all the witchcraft The sorcery working against them Be consumed now in Jesus name May your fire fall against the enemy concerning them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, arise and let our enemies be scattered for your namesake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, listen, uh, stay tuned for part two. Amen. Stay tuned for part two. Amen. Part two is coming soon. Amen. But listen, join that mass deliverance. Sign up, sign up. It's free, y'all. Go to the website, sign up, go to book a session, click mass deliverance, and sign up for the mass deliverance.
Hey, we love you. And we will see you guys next time. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.